Welcome to Yard Work, the video blog that digs into mass incarceration. Today we're going to be talking about the prison strike. My name is Mandy Goheen. I am no expert on prison strikes. However, I am the director of prison ministry at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, where we serve over 890 incarcerated members. And I'm joined today with my guest host. Hey, I'm Rodney Limery a learning fellow with the Church of the Larger Fellowship, supporting Mandy in the work of Worthy Now. Awesome. So today is a very special edition, and usually this is only going to come out every two weeks, but the prison strike is happening now, and we need to report on it. We had the honor of speaking to Reverend Susan Frederick Gray earlier this morning, and we have recorded a statement by her about the current United States prison strike. Hello. I'm Susan Frederick Gray, and I serve as president of the Unitarian Universalist Association, a faith community that stretches across the United States and across the world. There are over 1,000 congregations that make up the Unitarian Universalist Association. The Unitarian Universalist Association expresses its strong support for the incarcerated people engaged in the nationwide prison strike here in the U.S. On August 21st, 2018, prisoners across the U.S. declared a nationwide strike in response to a riot in the Lee Correctional Institution in South Carolina. During the riot, this maximum security prison, seven prisoners died and at least 20 more were injured. According to the South Carolina Director of Corrections, Brian Sterling, and accounts from several prisoners, prison guards and EMTs didn't intervene until hours after the riot began. Striking prisoners are demanding safe and humane living conditions, access to rehabilitation, sentencing reform, and the end of what they are calling a modern day system of slavery, where prisoners must often work for little or no money at all. Those on strike plan to continue striking until September 9th, 2018. Organizers say they hope it will bring public attention to the brutal conditions under which prisoners in the United States are suffering. To date, prisoners in 17 states are participating in this strike. Detainees at an Immigration and Customs Enforcement Facility, or ICE facility in Tacoma, Washington, have joined this strike par by participating in a hunger strike. The UUA passed an action of immediate witness to dismantle predatory medical care practices in prisons and end prisons for profit at its annual General Assembly this past June. The AIW was considered because of the testimony and advocacy of the Unitarian Universalist online congregation Church of the Larger Fellowship, which currently has more than 890 incarcerated members. Unitarian Universalists affirm the inherent worth and dignity of all people as a core value. Our faith teaches us to work for justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. And one of our key justice priorities at the UUA is fighting the expanding and increasingly dehumanizing forces of criminalization, because it is these forces that are among the most egregious affronts to human rights, human dignity, and liberty in the United States. The statistics of exploding incarceration rates, denial of basic human rights in U.S. prisons, the detention of children and families, and the corrosive effect of the private prison industry demand a moral outcry from faith communities. And so as Unitarian Universalists, we are called to show up in support of this prison strike. We are called to witness to radical love and to building justice. We are called to be in solidarity with prisoners as they organize to better their lives and conditions. We recognize the circle of love and justice always expand because of the leadership and the vision of those who most directly experience the suffering caused by injustice, like those on strike inside our nation's prisons now. As people of faith committed to love and justice, committed to compassion, and committed 
committed to the inherent worth and dignity of all people, we are proud to show our support for the prisoners on strike. Prison slavery abolitionists are planning a nationwide prison strike from this coming August 21st to September 9th. The inmates have put forward a list of 10 demands, including an end to work without wages behind the bars. Black Agenda radio producer Kyle Frazier spoke with two of the organizers. Brother Akin Yele works with the inmate group Unheard Voices, OTCJ, based in South Carolina, where fighting among inmates at the Lee Correctional Facility left seven dead and many injured last month. Brother D is a member of Jailhouse Lawyers Speak. This particular striker here was called by a number of prisoners throughout the nation. I'm sure you probably have the document in front of you. And also, he's a lot of guys that was already familiar with previous strikes, September the 9th, all the way down to the last one was August the 19th. After the incident that occurred at a Lee prison in South Carolina, a lot of the prisoners that was very familiar with prison conditions throughout the nation felt a need to stand up and support South Carolina, particularly South Carolina prisoners, in their human rights struggle for better conditions as well as citizen reform inside the state. So South Carolina is pretty much reflective of the rest of the nation. The only thing is we want to put a spotlight on the state of South Carolina because the state of South Carolina's incident is an indictment on the nation as a whole. The only difference is, is that in this particular incident, you had over seven casualties behind enemy lines. The national demands that have been drawn up, we've always drawn them up in the context prison slavery. We understand what prison slavery is. We understand the fundamentals of the prison system. We understand the foundations of it. With that said, they have drawn up in that context, but it was drawn up with this time, but separate from the September the 9th and August the 19th, is that they are drawn up from the perspective also with federal prisoners being involved in the conversation as well this time. So that kind of changes the dynamics of what's actually taking place now. So Rodney, can you give us an update on what's currently happening in the strike? Yeah, sure. There was a wonderful uh, article and uh, press release on this Tuesday from uh, NPR where they interviewed uh, Amani Sawari, who is a spokesperson for the inmates and the prison strike happening currently nationwide, um, in which he says that the main leverage that an inmate has is their own body. And I really love that quote. He, he states that prisons cannot run without prisoners' work. There were plans to have at least 17 states participate in the nationwide strike, but as you can imagine, it's really hard to get the word out uh, between prisons. And so they were really relying on the media outlets to cover this national effort. And they're very happy about that. As of Tuesday, a spokesperson for the Federal Bureau of Prisons told National Public Radio, NPR, that as of 1.30 p.m. On, that, on this past Tuesday, that there had really not been any reports of inmate work strikes at any of the Bureau of Prison Affairs uh, facilities. I wonder if that's trustworthy information, though. Um, I wonder if they would publicize what's going on especially if it's nonviolent and low key right now. Yes, so Mandy, that's a wonderful point. There is a, a, a different interview uh, by Democracy Now! with uh, Amy Goodman, one of their reporters. And she interviewed the professor Heather Ann Tom Thompson, who recently won a Pulitzer Prize for her book, Blood in the Water, The Attica Prison, Prison Uprising of 1971 and Its Legacy. And in this interview, Professor Thompson really underscores the point you just made, which is we can't trust a lot of the information coming out of the uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons because even though it's a publicly run and controlled and held uh, bureau bureaucratic office, uh, there's no oversight. So all of the information that comes out is up to the Bureau of Prison Affairs to gather, report on, and express. There is not an independent oversight of the federal prisons. So we're at 
we we have no choice but to take the word of the the people running these institutions and i certainly am not implying that they are lying but you know independent oversight is a key part of uh, keeping people accountable to to what they taxpayers are are expecting them to do what's interesting about the federal prison system that we learned last year and it's related to this strike is that the federal the federal system pays people as little as 16 cents an hour to work and this is another subject and for another day but whenever they have a medical visit and this includes in ice detention facilities every medical visit costs two dollars so if they're only making 16 cents an hour they don't have access to medical care and commissary items are very um inflated in price and until they pay their medical bills they can't receive commissary because the bill is tacked on together so any money they make goes into paying for their bills that the federal corrections charges them before they ever see a dime that they make so that is modern day slavery right and it is where we went especially here i live in montgomery alabama in the south it's especially where we went with prison labor after restoration to fill up the gap of slavery and get the labor that we needed only people became even more expendable when they were incarcerated and there are terrible stories of the history of that but um let's come back to what's going on today um is there any other things that you wanted to share with folks about what's going on no mandy i think it's uh i think this is important information and you underscored a really important uh, aspect of the 13th amendment that is unfortunate and has has you know empowered institutions to essentially legalize slavery once again and just let's be honest this is an insidious system of white supremacy right that we're talking about the, the system of mass incarceration and it reaches into our lives in many different ways and so what i wanted to do is tell you how tell the folks who are watching this how they can support the strike uh, also post some of these links when we post this video so you can go straight to them. You don't have to look through the video. The Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee has given us some tools and some action items for engaging in this strike. What we can do it, to support the strike is educate ourselves about the strike's demands, read the prison strike zine, Listen to the rest of the interview with the Jailhouse Lawyers Speak organizers. Follow on social media and promote hashtag August 21st and hashtag prison strike. You can endorse the strike. You can donate to the strike fund. You can spread the word of the strike both inside and out by printing out stickers and flyers and posters. Organize a phone cluster in preparation for phone zaps where you flood a particular institution with phone calls about the strike. Amplify, and this is the one that's most important to me, amplify incarcerated voices via social media using the hashtags August 21st and hashtag prison strike. So I think that's about all for today. We want to thank you for joining us for this very special edition, the very second episode of Yard Work. And we want to remind you that becoming a Worthy Now pen pal is easy as filling out a form on the internet. And there's lots of UUs out there who are waiting to hear from someone in the free world and make a connection. Like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at you, are, you as in the letter U, are worthy. Thank you all and see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.